I'm a time-based media designer. I come from Italy, from uh, Torino. I work with uh, visual uh, uh, communication, visual uh, moving images, and um, I love postcards. Since I discovered the continuous shutter speed in one of my old point-and-shoot photo camera, I started to take um, sequences of pictures and to put them together, together to create a um, short video loop. And uh, it is a simple technique, a simple and quick technique, and I called it moving postcards. I arrived in Doha in uh, August 2010 to teach timeless media to the freshmen of uh, VCU Qatar, 90% of which are young Arab women. My hiring process was uh, pretty fast. In June, I was contacted by the school, which was asking me if I was interested to go there for nine months to teach um, Time Studio to, in the foundation department. And uh, even if uh, I traveled a lot, I'd never been in the Middle East before. I didn't know what to expect, and uh, the little I knew was based on the most populist Western stereotype. And uh, while the moment of going there was approaching, I started to be a little bit nervous. And I remember speaking with the Dean Alison Winston on the phone and asking her, but um, how can I teach timeless media in a Muslim country where people are so concerned with uh, visual representation? And how can I do it in a school where the students are mainly Arab women in a country where women have so many constraints? She said that I didn't have anything to worry about, that I just needed to give myself the time to understand the students, to understand the context, and I would have been surprised on how many similarities I would have found between them and the Western students. So I went there, I prepared a lesson plan running around the title, Me, Myself, and Time, and I gave them a series of uh, simple assignments to teach them simple time-based media technique while they were bringing back to me uh, critical observations about themselves, their network, their society. And it was a sort of excuse to start understanding who they are, what kind of ambitions they have, and how they perceive the place in which they live in. I remember in um, one of the first um, classes, in a sort of uh, an icebreaker, um, session, I was asking them what kind of music they were listening to and who was their um, favorite um, singer. And I had a um, very conservative uh, looking student that um, at a certain point, I mean, she had her veil very tight covering the hair. Um, and uh, she said, I don't know who my favorite singer is, but I like Lady Gaga very much. <laughs> Suddenly, I understood that the internet is uh, their main window to look outside, and that they are the first generation completely exposed to the same inputs, culture, and subcultures the Western students are exposed to. And using a very common saying of the broken English international community, I understood that everything is same, same, but different. Doha is a city with uh, one of the fastest growth rate in the world, a place with uh, a high change in uh, pace that affects the country both uh, physically and, uh, and socially. They showed how the country looked in uh, uh, 1982, and uh, it's almost desert. And now it is uh, a very, it's an amazing place with a lot of skyscrapers just after 30 years. And uh, in a place like that, visual representation is a big deal. And every time I arrive in a new place, I start to document it visually. 
following that strong curiosity and sense of alert triggered by the status of uh, feeling a tourist. But shooting in Doha during the first month was uh, very difficult for me. I felt uncomfortable. I didn't know when to use my camera and when it was completely inappropriate to do it. So I, I asked my student to help me and uh, to show me their own, uh, their own Doha. Qatar is a very stratified society, so you have easy access only to the social layer you are part of. And having the students uh, showing me their Doha, I was able to discover places that were completely inaccessible for me. So uh, I taught them the technique, it became an assignment, and this is the context in which the Moving Postcard project started. The Moving po Mo Postcard project is an innovative endeavor that documents changing life in Qatar through a developing collection of uh, video fragments. It's a personal, professional, and educational research that aims to investigate contemporary short forms of video making. Why this interest in short forms of video making? Mainly because I get bored very quickly, and my students too. And I don't know, for example, every time I receive uh, a video in my inbox, in my Facebook wall, wherever, I immediately check how long the video is. And if usually if it is longer than one minute, I leave it there and I say to myself, I will watch it later, and I never do it. So I tried to develop a system that was creating videos and not still images, but in a faster and quicker way. So moving postcards are micro video loops that could represent a space, an atmosphere, an action, a behavior. They're very short, just a few seconds, but they run in a loop. So it's about the viewer to choose how long that video and that action has to be. I've always been interested in uh, representing visually the space, and I see architecture as a container of uh, human uh, behaviors and, action, and, and actions. So when I make my documentation, I always place the architecture in the background and I focus on what happens in that context. And this is exactly what I ask my students to do, to bring me back critical observation of what they see at home, in their neighborhoods, or downtown. Moving postcards are multimedia between photography and video making. They embed the beauty of a, a photograph that can move in a sort of infinite moment an action that repeats itself over and over and over again, giving the viewer the time to uh, understand all the little details happening in the background, in the foreground, and in between. The eye, the human eye, the animal eye, is attracted by movement, and this is why moving images are so appealing uh, for the viewer. In some extent, I consider it an evolution of photography, it gives the opportunity of contemplation, typical of still images, and the appeal of the movement. Moving postcards work um, on the fragment as module of meaning. From William Barrock's cuts up to the invention of the television remote control, arriving to our frenetic multi-tabbing browsing behaviors, we got used to fragmented storytelling. Every postcard has its own meaning. It tells its own little stories, but at the same time is a brick to create different and more complex narrative structures. Uh, when the project started, uh, Twitter was booming, so I started to define the moving postcards, the Twitter of video making. But actually, 2012, Vine was released and immediately acquired by Twitter so Twitter had for, uh, for real his own uh, micro-blogging video application. Instagram followed up immediately, uh, enabling the video mod, and uh, Snapchat is booming all over the world. Um, and think about the GIF. The GIF is living a sort of rebirth. In 2012, it was named Word of the Year. So all these services demonstrate a strong global interest in a short form of uh, video making. And I was surprised as when I've seen Universal Pictures promoting the speakable Me Too with just one GIF. So a full feature movie cut down into a single looping action. The Moving Postcard project 
has uh, three main goals, to produce an innovative documentary about Doha, Qatar, to produce content through educational activities, and, through cr and to create a local community of micro video makers. The project aims to document hidden spaces, rapid development, local culture, internationality, everyday life. It creates new perspective on the city for both a local and an international audience. Almost all the material has been produced by local students and they learn how to represent a location, but most importantly, they self-realize who they are in relation with the place in which they live in and they rediscover and re-understand Doha in a much more global context. At the same time, the project creates a local community of micro video makers. The overall portrait of the city uh, is the sum of every single fragment. The project has two main outcomes, a website and uh, an interactive installation. The website is the tool to reach an international and global audience, while the um, interactive installation has been uh, exhibited in many important venues in Doha to different kind of audiences. And I just would like to say that the project started into the, um, started as a personal research. It went into the classroom and it became a tool to discover Doha for a wide audience. I hope the project gave the students a different understanding of their identity. I hope that uh, it was interesting for you to discover uh, a little bit Qatar and Doha, and for sure, it helped me to understand the place where I was supposed to go for just nine months and where I spent happily the last five years of my life.